can you select the gender of your baby? Stay tuned to find out. Hello, I'm Dr. Ravina, NHS doctor specialised in women's health, and I'd like to welcome you to this dedicated channel for women's health, where we aim to educate, empower, and inspire women on all things to do with their bodies. If you'd like to check us out, if you're on the run, you can check out our podcast on fertility and femtech. Feel free to download our free ebook, and of course, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe to YouTube. So let's dive straight in. Selecting your gender of your baby is a massive topic. And I can't even tell you how many comments I've had on TikTok and private messages asking specifically about this. People are asking, look, I've already got three boys. I want a girl. How can I increase my chances of getting a girl? Or if you've already got one boy and you might want another one of the other sex, People are asking, how do I increase my chances of getting a girl? Well, what I wanted to do in this video is one, talk to you about the chromosomes in both male and female. I'd then like to go through some of the key myths that I hear, the old wives tells that people use um, to increase their chances of conceiving. And then I can talk to you a bit about what we can do medically to help you if you are in that position. So let's start with a quick science lesson on chromosomes. So an egg, which is found in the female ovaries, contains only X chromosomes. The sperm, which is produced in the testes of a male, contains either X chromosomes or Y chromosomes. So the sperm will be a mixture of either. And it's thought there's about a 50% production of X chromosomes and 50% production of Y chromosomes. So by looking at women, women that are born women and not identifying as women, they will be born with chromosome karyotype of XX. A male who is male assigned at birth will be karyotype X. Why? So by looking at women, they only have the chromosomes XX, therefore they can only produce X chromosomes in their ovaries. Whereas men have XY, so they will be the people that will be deciding the gender of the baby because they have the X and the Y. So to produce a woman, you would need an X egg with an X sperm. And to produce a male, you'd need the X egg and a Y sperm, and that will give you the karyotype of XY to give you a male or XX to give you a female. So the Y chromosome contains less genetic information and it's the X chromosome that contains more DNA, more histones, which makes it heavier as a sperm. Whereas the Y, as it contains less genetic information, it's lighter and thought can swim faster. However, it doesn't last in the female reproductive tract as long as the X chromosome. So let's move on to the myths surrounding gender selection. So the myths are based on some of the scientific information that Y chromosomes, so Y chromosome of sperm, contain less genetic information than the X chromosomes of sperm. So using that, because Y chromosome sperm are lighter, they can swim quicker and reach the egg quicker whereas X chromosome sperm are heavier, it will take a longer time for them to reach the fallopian tube, which is where the egg will be and where fertilization will take place. So one of the key myths is that if you have sexual intercourse on the day of ovulation, you're more likely to get a boy because the Y chromosomes swim quicker, so they will reach the tubes quicker than the X chromosome, so therefore a Y sperm and an X egg will produce a boy. The other myth surrounding getting a girl is if you have sexual intercourse two days before ovulation, um, the sperm will reach the tubes, but even though the Y chromosome sperm will reach the tubes quicker, they will die and the X chromosomes will reach there by the time the egg is released two days later. Now, there isn't actually any scientific information to even prove this. There have been loads of studies on this topic, but nothing has shown that it will definitely guarantee you either sex. And the problem with this is that some people only limit sexual intercourse to the day of ovulation or a couple of days before ovulation to try and get one sex or the other, which actually completely reduces your chances of conceiving in the first place. So for people that are having trouble conceiving, this isn't something that will help you. The second myth is surrounding the missionary position, increasing your chances of a girl. Um, it's thought this because the sperm is deposited um, slightly further away 
from the cervix in the vaginal canal. So it means the sperm have to travel a further distance to get to the egg and the X sperm will last slightly longer. So it's more likely that it will survive to fertilize the egg. Of course, there's actually no evidence to prove this one either. Another method of sex selection is using sperm washing and using a centrifuge and dye. And it's thought that by uh, using sperm washing, you can separate the X and Y chromosomes. And this is because it's based on the density of the sperm. So X sperm will be heavier, whereas the Y chromosome will be lighter due to lack of uh, genetic material. And also the dye, um, it's thought that the X chromosomes have more genetic material to take up the dye, so it will be more obvious compared to the Y chromosomes. Some studies have shown there's about a 50% chance of this being effective, which is actually the same statistic uh, of getting a girl or a boy just through natural conception. So don't be fooled by any sort of fertility services and encouraging you to go for this method to inc increase your chance of either a boy or a girl, because actually it's quite expensive for something that will just give you the same chances of um, having a baby normally. Now, the last option to identify the sex of your baby is a method which has 100% accuracy and it's a medical technique called IVF with pre-implantation genetic testing. So this follows the IVF process. So a woman is given medication to stimulate the ovaries to produce more eggs. They are then removed, collected, fertilized with a sperm in a Petri dish outside of the body and an embryo is grown. A biopsy, so a sample of cells are taken from the embryo and sent to a lab and then identified to see if it's a male or female. And then the embryo, which is growing, is reinserted into the womb. Now, in many places in the UK, this isn't allowed and we don't do it unless there's a reason like a genetic condition that follows through the Y chromosome or X chromosome where we would do this procedure, but it's not done as something which is routine. However, it may be done in various different areas of the world in private sectors. So that is one way. Something that's up and coming and being used a lot more in the UK is prenatal screening. And this is a blood test whereby you can collect the mother's blood but as the maternal circulation and fetal circulation are interlocked via the placenta, there will be fetal blood supply that's mixing with the maternal blood supply. And a blood test can be done from the mother to get samples of cells from the fetus. And that is a new and up and coming way in which you can identify uh, what the sex of the baby is. However, there are so many factors that can mean this test is not that effective. So it depends on how much of the concentration of the fetal blood supply you have in the maternal blood supply. And that can depend on the size of the woman, the size of the baby, if there's any placental issues. So that method can be used, but it's not 100% effective. So to summarize, those are some of the myths associated with sex selection in increasing your chances of a girl or a boy. If you're really desperate on getting either one, there's no harm in trying either of these methods, but of course, none of them are evidence-based and you may actually be missing your fertile window to get pregnant. I hope you found this useful. Drop any comments in the comment section down below and we'll see you next time. Take care, bye.